It is a self-evident fact that some people seem to attract success, wealth, attainment, recognition, and personal satisfaction, apparently with very little effort. Others reach these goals with the greatest difficulty, while still others never seem to reach them at all. What is the difference? It can't be physical, and it's a proved fact that such ability isn't inherited. Obviously then, the power, the capacity, the developed skill to achieve outstanding success must come from within the people themselves. It's the same quality that you possess to a greater or lesser degree right now, at this very moment. And if you want to change your wishes into facts, your dreams into realities, your desires into solid achievement, the all-important answer is personal motivation. Personal motivation is exactly what those two words indicate, the ability to motivate yourself to accomplishment. Personal motivation means the development of inner strength, conscious willpower, overwhelming desire, and the determination to reach any goal you, personally, want to achieve. No matter who you are or what your age may be, if you want to achieve permanent, sustaining success, the motivation that will drive you toward that goal must come from within. It must be personal, deep-rooted, and a part of your innermost thoughts. All other motivation, the excitement of a crowd, the stimulation of a pep talk, the exhilaration of a passing circumstance, is external and temporary. It will not last. Personal motivation is based on the scientific principle that each of us is, in fact, the end result of what we think. The only practical world is that which is within ourselves, the world in which we develop personal courage, enthusiasm, skill, confidence, and belief in our own abilities. It's here that we sharpen our intelligence to motivate ourselves and to make goals tangible realities. Scientific research attests to the fact that the average adult man or woman makes use of only 25 to 30 percent of his total mental capacity. Consequently, 70 or 75 percent of the average person's brain remains idle and unproductive. And since all growth and progress comes from within, there is practically no limit to what a personally motivated man can accomplish. How do you motivate yourself? Where do you begin? First, by a frank and honest self-appraisal at this very moment. Ask yourself these questions. Where do I stand now? Evaluate your strengths and your weaknesses, your assets and liabilities. Put the answers down in black and white, exactly where you stand now. Face yourself squarely, honestly, realistically. What are my goals? Do you have any definitive aims or goals? Do you know what you really want in each of the six most important areas of your life? When I say six most important areas, I mean physically, spiritually, mentally, financially, socially, and your home and family. Do you know what your short-range goals are? Your long-range goals, your tangible goals, your intangible goals in each of these six areas? If you've answered these questions, you may still ask yourself, how do I motivate myself? How can I become successful through personal motivation? Here's a dynamic five-point million-dollar plan of personal motivation you can use to guide your own life. Point number one, crystallize your thinking. Determine what specific goals you want to achieve, short-range, long-range, tangible and intangible. Then write this information down in black and white. Writing crystallizes thought, and thought motivates action. Be specific about your goals. Don't generalize or use vague terms. Use vivid imagining. Picture eyes. We must develop the faculty of seeing with our mind's eye, seeing concisely exactly what we imagine, what we want. There is a universal law. We tend to draw to ourselves that which we set out from ourselves. 
No man can attract to himself what his thought repels. We become precisely that which we imagine ourselves to be. Low aim is only low self-concept expressing itself. When your goals are clear and vivid, they act as a magnet to draw you to them. Goal setting is the most important positive action of your life. When you've written this down, dedicate yourself to its attainment with honest zeal and singleness of purpose, with unswerving one-trackmanship. When you set definite goals, you're forming your own personal plan of action that will put theory into practice, turn knowledge into know-how, and thought into action. A plan of action discourages procrastination and creates within you an inspirational discontent. It will motivate you to a greater utilization of your full potential. A plan of action, when you personalize it, enables you to sense the limitless power of your own talents, abilities, and capacity to change. It provides the means for you to emerge from hindering circumstances that have heretofore stopped you and to establish a personal success direction. Point number two, develop a plan for achieving your goal and a deadline for its attainment. This detailed plan is the roadmap, the design, the time template that will guide you to your goal. The plan must necessarily list the obstacles and roadblocks between where you are now and where you want to go, and also how you intend to get around them, through them or over them. Be frank with yourself. Remember your strengths and your weaknesses, your assets and liabilities. Write them down, just as you did with your goals. Also, you need to write down very clearly your way around the obstacles and roadblocks. Another important point in this part of the plan is pinpointing the talents and skills you now possess and how you intend to improve them. Also, a specific schedule of time organization, a detailed outline of the progress you intend to make. Put down every step and move, day by day, week by week, month by month. You'll need them to check on the progress you're making. Develop a positive attitude of, I will not be denied. Such determination will not eliminate all of your problems, but it will give you an attitude of stick to and perseverance, and you will create the success you're striving for. With this kind of attitude, you'll be thankful for problems because you can turn them into procedures and proceed to the next step of your journey. Point number three, develop a sincere desire for the things you want in life. A burning desire is the greatest motivator of every human action. Unquestionably, the degree of success you achieve depends on the amount of sincere desire you have. True desire will strengthen your resolve to attain your specified goals in all six areas of your life, and not just those in which it's easy to progress. Desire is akin to thirst. When you visualized exactly what you want in each area of your life, desire will add strength to your purpose. It will improve your self-image. Also at this point, you can determine the very real difference between wish and desire. You can discover the difference easily by asking yourself these three questions. A. What are the obstacles and roadblocks I will personally have to overcome to achieve my goals? B. What are the rewards for me personally if I attain them? C. Is it worth it to me? If your answer is yes, you'll know you have genuine desire. Point number four. Develop supreme confidence in yourself and your own abilities. Confidence in yourself helps you to deal honestly with your shortcomings and compels you consistently to make corrections. Confidence comes from experience. Experience comes from know-how. Know-how comes from having the courage to submit yourself to obstacles, situations, and circumstances that the average person shies away from. People who lack confidence, who are not goal-directed, spend an entire lifetime standing on the sidelines as passive bystanders. 
confidence stimulates your creative imagination. No matter what you undertake, you will never do it until you think you can. You will never master it until you have the confidence in yourself to do the deed first in your own mind. It must be mentally accomplished before it can be materially accomplished. The primary element at the beginning of any enterprise, the one factor which will guarantee its success is confidence in the beginning that it can be done. The major difference between high achievement and failure is confidence, your self-image. This is what sells you and your ideas. It builds your success power. We either succeed at failure or succeed at success. Both of these results are outward expressions of the attitude you hold toward them. You can either think rich or think poor. Abundance or lack. Poverty or plenty. The choice is yours. We're all creatures of habit. When we consistently maintain success attitudes toward every situation and circumstance, we rapidly develop success habits. We make fewer mistakes. We make smaller mistakes. We make faster corrections and adjustments because we have a success consciousness and a goal-directed attitude. The degree of success which you obtain is governed solely by the amount of habitual determination you expend. Every time you say to yourself, I can do it, and I will do it, you are strengthening your determination. You are forming a habit of thinking which will manifest itself in action habits of success. You are constructing your determination and personally motivating yourself to success. You're forming the daily habit of sustained effort, controlled attention, and concentrated energy. You can prove this very easily by observing any successful person you know. They succeed in everything they do because they never give mental recognition to the possibility of failure. Point number five. Develop a dogged determination to follow through on your plan regardless of circumstances obstacles, criticism, or what other people say, think, or do. Determination is persistency. If you make a decision, plan a course of action or make a resolution, and then ignore your intention. You'll form a habit of failure. When you make up your mind to follow your plan of personal motivation, do it. Let nothing or no one interfere. Do whatever you personally have to do to get the job done. In point number three, when you asked yourself the question, is it worth it to me? And you answered, yes. There can now be no circumstances that can prevent you from reaching your goals. You can further develop your determination by reviewing your written plan often, by concentrating on the rewards. Thus, your desire and determination will stimulate a ceaseless flow of dynamic, powerful, and positive direction to keep you on course until your aims are realized. If you actually know your present strengths and weaknesses, if you definitively know what you want in each of the six areas of your life, know the short-range and long-range goals, the tangibles and intangibles, why is it that you do not have them now? Obviously, it's because there are some obstacles and roadblocks in your way. What are they? What is it that stands between you and the achievement of your goal? What are the ways around these roadblocks? What are you doing about it? It's easy to generalize and hope. That's little more than wishful thinking. The power of personal motivation comes through a definite, personalized plan of action and the application of that plan every day of your life. It's your attitude of mind that determines your reaction to everything you experience in life. If you develop a successful attitude toward everything you do and say, you'll create the success you're striving for. You will magnetize the condition you seek. A person who is success-minded has a success consciousness and success awareness. He lives with positive expectancy. He lives by the law of attraction. He magnetizes his condition. 
When you apply these five points in a plan for your own personal motivation, when you develop success attitudes, success habits, and have a plan of action, you'll find yourself living with positive expectancy. There is an irresistible law of force that governs every human action. It's called the law of attraction, and it operates with mathematical certainty. We attract what we think. Every negative thought has a negative result. On the other hand, positive thoughts are the bases for success attitudes and success habits which lead directly to positive expectancy in everything we do. Positive expectation, of course, must come from a sincere, honest belief, a no-limitations belief in yourself and your ability a no-limitations belief in everyone with whom you come in contact, a no-limitations belief in conditions and circumstances. In other words, an attitude that refuses to accept limitation in any way, shape, form, or manner. With positive expectancy, you'll wake up in the morning figuring out ways things can be done instead of ways they can't be done. You will look to your strength instead of your weakness, your power instead of your problems. You will enter each day without giving mental recognition to the possibility of defeat. You will see potentials and possibilities you couldn't see before. You will withhold judgment. You will be a better listener. Your words, your tone, your actions will stop contradicting each other. You will be understood. You will stop being misunderstood. You will enter the arena of life with greater dignity, greater confidence, and greater pride. Your decision-making faculties will be clearer. Your judgment will be both discerning and fair. There will be less margin for error, and you will be sought after for advice. These are just a few of the many benefits you'll receive with a plan of action based on personal motivation. This is what personal motivation means. The ability to live and work each day of your life in the brilliant sun of positive expectancy.